Hello and welcome to a video where we stuff the make no mistake pattern. I have got fluffy stuffing, I have got weighted stuffing, I have a whole video on stuffing gnomes and the materials and things like that. If you want to watch about the different kinds of weighted materials, I live somewhere dry and where there are very few pests, so beans work for me, but you may want to use aquarium gravel or something like that, but you're going to need weighted stuffing and fluffy stuffing. I have my gnome. I knit most of the gnome on nine inch cirques because this is a nice big gnome. Isn't this fun? Uh, and so I have that, but that's not enough to give me space to do the stuffing that I need. So I've got two DPNs on here as well. And we are going to be stuffing. And obviously stuffing up into this tiny little tip is not gonna be fully possible. Depending on how yours has gone, you may find the floats here got really tight and you may not be able to stuff very high. So the first tip I'm going to give is not to stuff below the area you can get into with lots of f stuffing because if there's a big difference between where you can get in and where you can't, it's gonna make that more obvious. The other thing I wanna talk about is that this gnome is meant to be much more oval, much narrower uh, on the sides. And that is, let's see if I can pull this apart here and, and look at this. Oh, look at that string just going on there. So you can see by the, by the little rectangle we're building at the bottom of this gnome that this is sort of the width of the gnome. Now, of course it is knitted fabric and it will fill out wider than just this with these corners, but we really want to be preserving um, more of an oval shape than a full circle with how we stuff. You may find that getting uh, the stuffing all the way up into here is really difficult and there's a great tip that was shared on our boards uh, at some clue to use a pencil because the eraser provides a little bit of friction and really helps push the stuffing up into there. And I'm always reminding people to use uh, less stuffing than they think per, per stuffing moment because we want to build up thin layers rather than big blobby bits that then want to develop air gaps and pockets and basically cause problems. So I've got a very little bit. I'm not shoving it in too hard. Um, and if I needed to, I could put the pencil up in there and we could probably get it a little higher and a little more full. But like I said, there is a difference between what we can stuff and what we can't. And we don't want that to be so different that it's kind of like bulges out there. So I'm going to keep mine about like that for now. We'll see how we develop. And from here on, I should be able to get my finger in, but I'll put the pencil off to the side for now. So when we are stuffing gnomes, we want to think about stuffing them with sort of a sedimentary approach. So sedimentary rocks formed in layers when uh, material settles out from the water and just kind of floats down to the bottom of rivers and lakes. And so we want to be creating levels of thin bits of um, stuffing so that we don't get a big glump and a big glump and then a big air pocket. Because even if it looks good now, over time as that sort of settles, it will become um, a lumpy sort of gnome. So uh, that looks, again, about right. I like to kind of push up with my finger and then squeeze from the outside to see what happens and if it feels the same everywhere. That is way too much. I just started telling you not to do too much and then I do a giant melon's worth of stuffing. And as you're doing that, watch how far the stitches are wandering to the edges of any needles you've got. So I stuff in with one hand, kind of use this hand to put pressure against that there and then I I, I, I feel to see how it's going. So we're supposed to stuff about to half of the body and then we'll do weighted stuffing there. I really want you to resist the urge to overstuff the hat. It just has to be full enough that it has its own shape and it will stand and act nicely. Don't cram it full. But we want to be able to see can you see this mistake I made? I'm gonna go back and double a duplicate stitch over whatever happened there. Anyways, there is one side that is perfect. Um, we want to be able to see this frame. Uh, so if you stuff it too round, that will disappear. So keep things pretty flat in the hat especially. And then stuff about the, the body about halfway full. And then we're gonna add the weighted stuffing. 
I like to use my hands in sort of a C shape with my fingers here with the uh, needle tips bracing on top and then I've got sort of a, an area here I can pour the, the weighted stuffing into. You will need more than you think. It will fill up and then as soon as you sort of uh, do anything with it, it will uh, fill back down. Um, one thing I want you to note is I don't want you stuffing past this pearl turn, this garter ridge here, because that is going to be the bottom. All of this red is what it's going to be sitting on. So you don't want to stuff so that this wants to round and make your gnome tippy. Depending on what you're doing, you may be able to just pour right in. This is a wider gnome opening than we're used to stuffing. And that's because we are just going to Kitchener it shut next. What you're looking to do is when you pinch your needles shut and you turn it upside down, you feel like the body is a full shape, but not so full that you'll necessarily have um, the roundedness of it be so round that you won't be able to see the bottom. Um, ideally, what's going to happen is these little corners will sort of pop out beneath the body. So you're gonna have to like sort of hold this tight, turn it upside down, see how you feel, check the center of balance. You really want the center of balance to be low so that this gnome doesn't just wanna tip over all the time and kind of wiggling it around in your hand will help you figure out um, if you've achieved that. How's that doing? Oh, see, that looks pretty good. That looks like a full gnome with a rounded body and it will sort of settle over time as the weights happen, but it should be pretty good. So what happens next? The next thing we need to do is the kitchen art shut, but we don't want to be just angry and infuriated by these popping out all the time like that. So what we do is we take a little bit of our fluffy stuffing, not much because we don't want to make the bottom rounded and puffy. Uh, we just want it to be sort of the same size as the bottom. And then what we do is we use that to make a little lid. So I'm going to lay that in over there, tuck it in and around underneath right along the fabric in the side, sort of between the, the, the weighted stuffing and the knitted fabric. And then what we've got is we've got just a little uh, lid to keep those in. I'm going to rearrange these so that they're just on two needles and Kitchener it shut. If you want to do a three needle bind off, you can, totally fine. Uh, it really depends on which one you feel more comfortable doing to end this gnome. Hope that helps. I hope that you have a lovely, plump, uh, wide little, um, well not so little gnome, and I'll see you for the next video. Happy gnoming! Mm -hmm.